I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ball game. I'll walk away from it and this has been like a therapy session. Andrew McCart, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm here with Liam Smith. Liam, you've just done your public workout. Do you remember six, eight months ago when we spoke about this fight and I told you how excited I was as a boxing fight if this fight ever got made? We're three days away. I'm excited. How excited are you? I'm excited, mate, obviously, the way the way I should be on a on a fight week for a big fight like this. Massively excited and, and excited to, to be back in the arena, top and bills and back on Sky Sports. Back on Sky Sports, top and bells in a massive arena, Sky Sports box office as well. Now, it's probably safe to say that the last maybe three fights, maybe not the Jesse Vargas fight, but it was on an undercard, that they haven't set the, for you, maybe not have set your, that fire in your belly like you had set the world on fire, but this fight right here has got everyone's imagination going. Who will win? Who's got the, stu will go the distance? Eubank win. Everyone's sort of like to and throw on who's going to win. How do you see this fight going? I mean, there's been back and forth, so how do you see this fight going yourself? Yeah, obviously, I see it. it can play out many ways this fight but obviously I think both sides is going to end up gelling you know if I start doing something that I don't feel is working I'm going to go for Chris if Chris comes for me then obviously I'm going to have to fight fight with him if he tries to box me and it's not working for him then he's going to have to try and fight me so it kind of all reverts back to it's going to end up a good fight and you know probably well, I said that to you. I said, when I see this fight happen, as a boxing fan, I've been in boxing for a number of years. I've done a little bit of fighting, done this, I've watched boxing quite a lot. When I see you used to fight, I think when you look at the styles, I can see cuts, I can see knockdowns, I can see everything, I can see excitement. What suits you better? A boxing fight where it's just at range, or do you, do you want it to be a tear up? Does that suit you more, Chris coming to you and having thrown shot after shot after shot? That's where I feel like this fight could go many ways. Look, I feel like strip everything back, I'm probably a better fighter. Strip Chris back, he's a better fighter. But then on the flip side to that, I know I'm a better boxer than Chris. I know I've got a better boxing brain, I've got you know, better skills than Chris. Chris. He's fit and he's athletic, but he's not technically very, very good. Mm. And, and you know, I stand by that. Um, he's fit, he's durable, got a good chin, takes a good shot. Strong because of his fitness, but not a massive puncher. And that, 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 that's the way I break Chris down. Um, that, that, that's how, how, how I see him. I think he's fit, he's durable, he punch, punches together well. Not a massive one punch, you know, knockout asses, but is strong in the same sense. I don't feel he boxes very well, like fundamentally wise, um, and that's where I feel I can fully capitalise on this in the moment I need to. I remember months ago when we spoke about this one over Zoom and a couple of interviews, I said to you about the mind games. Now, there has been some mind games uh, leading up to this. There's been a billboard in Manchester. <laughs> I'm 34, I've boxed Canelo, I've fought Kabanov in Russia, I've fought Lozano in Mexico. I've Man games, he, I'm like, I'm 34, you're not gonna like make me lose sleep or make me train differently or make me react differently and sitting across the table from you. Um, and but look, that's what he's hoping on, that's what he like. I said, he's dying to be under my skin, and I, I, like I said before, you're not gonna get under my skin doing shit like that, mate. Let's talk about the spa then because there's been mind games on his size, but you have a, a story where you sparred him many years ago, you happen to. Uh, I left it to the body, I believe. He's went back in the corner, the buzzer went, and he's said he hurt his elbow. That's why he went down and sort of like crouched down and went to his knee or whatnot. What exactly happened? Look, a lot, it's like probably too much has been made, I mean, that's been made a story now. But you only have to know by Chris's reaction how much he like exaggerates it now and like throws a bevy on it. What happens? The body, I, I hit him with a body shot, he sunk quick, then the bell went and he goes like this with his arm and, and looks at his arm. Now, you can say what he wants. You can say the body shot at his elbow. I don't care. It makes no difference. Look again. I'll be honest with you now. It doesn't mean to say I'm going to crease him with a body shot this time. But I'm just saying, don't be fooled by all this bollocks. Chris Eubank Jr. can't be hurt. It's a proper myth. Okay, he's got a good chin. I can even under fights with very, very good chins who eventually get knocked out. Don't like people are baffled and people are like thinking as if right. Chris Eubank can't be hurt yet, so okay, well I might well, not throw a headshot or fight then because I can't hurt him yet. So what the fuck are we turning up for? Mm. Don't be fooled thinking Chris can't be hurt. You're mad if you think he's never going to get hurt, the head. But obviously, the flip side to it was, I know I can hurt him the body. And that, that, that's always it got portrayed and he puts, a, he puts a bevy on it. Now when he's asked about it, 
I got like, uh, oh, I was I, I, I give me a ten count and fucking blah blah blah. I never even said nothing about the spa, mate. I never even said I battered your sparring. I just said, don't be fooled that you can't be here because I know I've hurt you. And that, that, that's how the sparring story come out. But he says it's bollocks, so it must be bollocks. Well, it's many years ago, you know, so who, who knows, who knows. Yeah. I'm saying it's irrelevant. It's yeah. just the answer to all oh, this. Chris can't be hurt. Chris can't be hurt. Chris can be hurt. Let me tell you, Chris can be hurt. Well, you've but seen that in the, Chris, the George Groves fight, like you, you alluded to in that interview in the ring there, you alluded to it that you've lost in this arena, it was against George Groves and you were bloody and beaten, so, I mean, I, I talk about the winner and loser of this fight, you win this fight, Yeah, I fight Chris again, you fight Chris again, exactly. where? Well look, the, <laughs> I, I, I lose this fight, I win this fight, I fight Chris again, where? but on my terms, yeah. you know, in Liverpool, preferably Love Anfield, but look, Chris, the last time you were in the arena, you not remember that. So don't try and twist this to like your football teams and Liverpool coming back to Manchester. Look, you sorry little face. That was the last time you was in this arena, so don't try and like, again, you're not clever enough. I know you're trying to twist the billboard into the football, the football teams, Liverpool coming to Manchester for a beating again. You're coming back to the arena to lose again, what you lost in last time. Touched on Anfield though, I, mean, I do want to touch on that because I spoke to, I, I jokingly spoke to your brother Paul and, and Swifty and I said what would that do if, if Liam does get that Anfield fight and I think they both toy with the idea of coming back and yeah, does, back. does it mean that much to you that Anfield, that, how much does that mean for you? I know you've played football there but fighting there, how much would that mean to you? Look, you, you, you put that in the city, you, you'll be having fights come out the woodwork, you'll probably have Pricey trying to come out of retirement, everyone will try and get on that show just, just to, to have the privilege and to say I fought at Anfield, uh, you know, everyone, everyone will be jumping out the woodwork to get on that, but it'll just be something, you know, a huge thing for the city, and that, that, that's what it'll be, it'll be a dream of mine, because I dreamt of playing footy there from a kid, imagine me fighting there for a world title or fighting Chris in a rematch. Absolutely amazing, now I know it's getting late, you've, you're have you probably ready to go home, which is obviously quite right, because you've done a lot of media there, one final one for me then, can you stop Chris Eubank Jr on Saturday night? Of course I can. Of course I can, and that doesn't mean to say I'm going to stop Chris, but of course I can, do not be fooled thinking Chris can't be stopped, like, I don't know where, like, he's got a good chin, he's got a great chin, but don't think, that doesn't mean he can't be stopped, don't be, don't be stupid, but regardless of the situation, I've prepared for the Liam Smith win, and, I, and I'm 100% confident I beat Chris Schumann on Saturday night. Liam, thank you so much as always, mate, like I said to you then months ago, I'm excited for this fight, I can't wait, see you at the press conference tomorrow, mate, Sorry. cheers Liam. I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. Eh? See if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ballgame. I'll walk away from here and this has been like a therapy session.